five of abnormal psychology, we're talking about schizophrenia. So schizophrenia is like one of the kind of worst psychological uh, problems you can have. It affects roughly about 1% of the population. Um, and when we get to the genetics part, we'll talk about it, but uh, it, it can run in families. It's, can, you know, if you have an identical twin that has it, your risk goes up. But so basically what schizophrenia is, is it's disorganized thinking. So you're disorganized thinking. You have disturbed perceptions. And you have inappropriate emotions and actions. So you might get too excited, you might be too mad, you might, you know, whatever the situation is, you know, you spill a cup of water, you might flip out, just complete, go back crazy on it. And uh, you might also get way too excited for situations. So disorganized thinking, disturbed perceptions, and inappropriate emotions and actions. These are the three hallmarks of schizophrenia that you need to have known. Uh, one of the things that's very common with schizophrenia is delusions. Um, delusions are disorganized thoughts. They may result as a result of a breakdown in selective attention. Remember back from sensation and perception, our brain taking in all these different sensory inputs and it chooses to selectively attend to only a handful of them at any one time. Well, everybody's getting all these and your, your brain's choosing to deal with some of them. So schizophrenics is, you know, theorized might be not being able to deal with all those perceptions. It might be trying to deal with more than one, more than they should be, and it's overwhelming them, and so they're, you know, feeling things and seeing things that they shouldn't. Um, there's a difference. Uh, one thing that kind of pops up here is delusions and hallucinations. Delusions, right, are a problem with our cognitive systems. So delusions are a problem with our cognitive systems. Delusions is when we have problems thinking, right? We think something is not, or we overreact because we think something's bigger than it is. Um, this is as opposed to a hallucination, right? When we talked about drugs, and a hallucination is a false perception, right? And so this is a problem when you're with your perceptual systems. So this is a problem with your ears, your eyes, all these different things. So hallucination is a problem with your perceptual systems. Delusions is a problem with your cognitive systems. Just keep that in mind. It's often confused. So there's some different types of schizophrenia that you should know about. You should really actually know all of these and kind of just have an understanding of what they are. Um, so paranoid are, are preoccupied with hallucinations um, they often their hallucinations often are you know persecution or grandiosity so they might think that you know the aliens are coming to attack them and they need to get out of here or they might think you know that they're the king um, so paranoid is preoccupied with hallucinations and you know themes of persecution or grandiosity Disorganized um, schizophrenia disorder would be disorganized speech or, you know, inappropriate emotions. Emotions. So, um, you might talk different, you might, your words might not make sense, your emotions might be way too extreme, or they might just be flat, they can just be no emotion at all, that can be a type of schizophrenia, disorganized schizophrenia, so they might just be just completely non-emotional. Um, so there you go, so paranoid, hallucinations, disorganized, inappropriate speech or emotions. Catatonic um, is immobility, so if you see somebody who has catatonic schizophrenia, um, they may just be talking all of a sudden and they just freeze up and they might not move. It's kind of crazy to see somebody with a catatonic schizophrenia. 
Um, also, they might have extreme negativism or they might repeat words all the time or repeat your words and your movements. And so it's a number of different things. So it might freeze, might repeat your words or movements, might be extremely negative. Those are kind of some symptoms of that. Undifferentiated is just varied. So you're schizophrenic, but you're not any one in particular, just one of these. You just have a, a range of these um, symptoms. And then residual is you're with, you withdraw a lot. Withdraw um, after your hallucinations and delusions have disappeared. And so, again, right, so schizophrenia break from reality, right? We're all, we're, all these things are breaks from reality. We talked about disassociation a couple of parts ago. Disassociation was a break from yourself. That you, you don't feel like yourself. Schizophrenia is you breaking from reality. There's like, here's what's really happening. Here's what's really going on in the world around you, and you're, you're not part of that. So why, what causes schizophrenia? What causes this horrible, you know, problem? Um, one of the causes that you should probably know for AP Psychology is, that it's often asked on the test, is dopamine overactivity. So dopamine remembers a neurotransmitter. Too much dopamine um, can cause hyperactive brain, right? If your brain's hyperactive, it can start hearing, seeing, those types of things. Um, so dopamine overactivity is a big one that you should know. Um, there's abnormal brain activity and anatomy. That's kind of some reasons now. So they're with PET scans, and they're doing these different scans of MRIs and whatnot of your brain. They're seeing some, some enlarged sacs in particular parts, um, less dense gray matter in part of your brain. As you can see here, um, somebody who's seeing some hallucinations has an overactive. These people are seeing the same image, overactive parts of their brain. Um, schizophrenia definitely runs in families. Like we said, if you have a parent who's schizophrenic, you have a 10% chance, a higher chance of getting it. A mother who's schizophrenic. Um, if you have an identical twin who's schizophrenic, you have the biggest chance. You have like about a 40 to 65 or so percent of getting schizophrenia as well. So it's so that, you know, there's twin stays, right? They show big time that that's genetic, or that at least genetic plays a role. Um, psychological factors, it used to be thought that, like in the old, older days, that, you know, um, a mother who was, uh, you know, apart and wasn't caring and loving could cause a child to be schizophrenic, which isn't really, we've shown that not, not true anymore. That used to be a thing. But the key here, like a lot of things, is that all this stuff plays a role. So it's not any one factor. It's a combination of everything that we think plays a role in schizophrenia. Um, schizophrenia is usually diagnosed, by the way, um, in between 20 and 40, somewhere in that range. It's not, you really don't see a lot of children who's schizophrenic. It's usually diagnosed later in life. So that's kind of what's interesting about schizophrenia as well. All right, so schizophrenia, interesting disease and... Um, See you next time.